How's everybody doing this evening? Uh, we've come together tonight for our virtual Bible study, and I'm excited to share with you as always. I want to, of course, start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are so mighty. We thank you because you are so awesome. We thank you, Lord, because you never fail us. We thank you, Lord, because your word says in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning us. And so, Father, we ask that you would prepare our hearts, Father, that we may hear from you as we study your word, that we may uh, be convicted, that we may be encouraged and even inspired, Father, through your word on this evening. Father, we ask that you would touch every person who is tuning in right now, Father, that you would uh, allow us to share in your word so that we can continue to grow and continue to develop. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God and all of God's people said amen. Well, again, I'm glad to be here with you today for our evening Bible study. And as you guys tune in and as you guys continue to share, I want to make sure that you guys know that this Sunday is Mother's Day. And so I wanna make sure that you guys do what you can to stream service with your mother, um, stream service with your children, uh, stream service with your families. I want you to do that uh, with us. And come on in, and we have a special surprise for you that you'll see on Sunday um, as we honor our mothers. Amen? We're going to get ready to go right into the Word, but just before we do, I always want to make sure that you guys are able to um, support the ministry financially, that you guys are able to uh, worship the Lord through your giving, through your tithes, and through your offering. And so at this time, there are three ways that you're able to give electronically, all of them safe and secure. Those are on your screens uh, even right now. And so I ask that you take a moment and that you would prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially as God continues to bless this ministry because of you. You are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Amen. And so we're going to get ready to go right into uh, the word. And so I want you guys to know that today we're going to be talking from uh, the subject, Don't Try Me. And today we're going to talk about this constant battle between victimization and vulnerability. As we have been watching together and analyzing the HBO series Insecure, we've been able to see some things. And I want you to see that there is uh, one common thread that connects all of the characters. And that is all of them are finding it difficult to be vulnerable. All of them are finding it difficult to be vulnerable. If you look at Andrew, Andrew is dating Molly, but he's having a tough time opening up to her. If you look at Molly and Issa's relationship, they're in a tough spot uh, because they have some issues that they need to discuss and to work on, but they can't do that because neither of them are willing to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable in order to say what's bothering you, and neither of them have been willing to do that at this time. And so uh, you need to know that sometimes it's what you refuse to say that kills your relationship. And so that's Molly and Issa. And then even if you look at Cordola, Cordola is in a relationship with Lawrence. Cordola is in a relationship with Lawrence, and Cordola has these reservations about being vulnerable to Lawrence. And so Lawrence actually ends up inviting himself to Friendsgiving, uh, a party on Thanksgiving that Cordola host, hosted for her friends. Uh, this is a time where she brought her friends together and she wasn't sure she was ready to be that vulnerable with Lawrence, but he kind of pushed himself in there. And later on that night, Lawrence ends up, uh, he ends up uh, kind of calling Cordola out on some things. Lawrence begins to call Cordola out and, and it's funny that he calls her out on her uh, not willingness to be vulnerable because uh, Lawrence is not that vulnerable himself. Lawrence has a, a secret conversation with Issa. He goes and meets with her, and 
they have this conversation where Lawrence uh, puts in a request and he says, uh, can you not share any information or talk to uh, my girlfriend about me? I want to be able to do that for myself, which is not a horrible thing. It's not a horrible thing for you to want the opportunity to share information uh, since you're in the relationship with that person. Uh, but here is where it gets a little tricky. Um, the next day, Issa is out at a party with Cordola uh, because they are friends. And she, before she meets up with Cordola, she calls Lawrence and she says, hey, am I not supposed to share with Cordola that me and you had a conversation? Uh, he didn't want her to share that conversation because even Lawrence has secrets. Even Lawrence is in a place where he is not willing to say everything that's on his mind. Even Lawrence has his walls up. So my question to you is, uh, when you look at yourself, are you vulnerable? Do you have a tough time? And I want you to talk to me in the comments. Do you have a tough time being vulnerable to people? Do you have a tough time being vulnerable when you're in a new relationship? How soon in that relationship should you make a decision to be vulnerable? Is it wrong to be reserved after you have committed yourself to someone in a relationship? Is it tough for you to be vulnerable, uh, not just with intimate relationships or romantic relationships, should I say, but is it tough being vulnerable with your family members? Do they really know how you feel? Is it tough sharing your dreams with your family, sharing your challenges and your weaknesses with your family? Is it, is it tough being vulnerable with your church family? Oftentimes, uh, we come to church, we shout, we say hallelujah, we say thank you, Jesus. But how often are we really in that place where we can say, you know what? Uh, I'm willing to take the mask off. I'm willing uh, to actually be myself here so that I can heal properly. Uh, but many of us are so afraid of what people will think about us. Many of us are so afraid and the more you care about a person, the more sometimes you get afraid of what they will think about you when they find out that you are not as perfect as you have let off to be. Do you have a problem with being vulnerable? And here's what I found out, um, and Brene Brown uh, says it the best. She talks about the vulnerability paradox. There is this paradox that comes with being vulnerable, and that's this. It's the first thing I look for in you and the last thing I want you to see in me. It's this paradox. It, it's almost like it contradicts uh, what we're trying to do here. It's, there's some irony there where I want to be with someone who is vulnerable. I just don't want to have to be vulnerable back. I want to be around people who will be real with me, who will be honest with me, who will share uh, their authentic person, their authentic self. I just don't want to have to do the same thing because it's a sacrifice when you're trying to be vulnerable. It's, it's, it's a little different. It's hard to do. And many of us need to ask ourselves that question. Why can't I be vulnerable? Why do I have such a hard time opening up to people? People that I love. People that I actually want to trust. I'm not talking about those who are saying, you know what, I don't trust nobody, it's me against the world. I'm talking about people who actually are searching for love. You want to be married. You want to have great friendships. You want those intimate relationships and connections. You long for them. It's just that you yourself, you are not able to open up. Why can't I open up? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have you ever felt that way, that it was you who was holding back? It was you who, were, who, who, who made the decision to keep certain secrets. They were talking to you. They were opening up to you, but it's you. Why am I having such a hard time being vulnerable? And as I was doing some studying here, I found this out. Uh, vulnerability and victimization are inextricably tied together. Vulnerability and victimization are inextricably tied together. They're tied to one another. Uh, here's really the first point. A victim mentality will not allow you to be vulnerable. 
a victim mentality will not allow you to be vulnerable. In other words, you can't be victim or you can't be vulnerable because many of us, you still see ourselves, because many of us still see ourselves, excuse me, as victims. We can't be vulnerable because we still look at ourselves and we still see a victim from years ago. The reason that so many people have a problem with being vulnerable is because of how we see ourselves. That's where the insecurity comes into play. It's because of how we see ourselves. It's because many of us still see ourselves as the victim from what happened to us, let's say, four years ago. Maybe you had four or five different relationships since then, since the time where your heart was broken and you almost didn't make it through. But the truth of the matter is none of those relationships uh, were ever going to make it because you still see yourself as a victim. Because you still see yourself as someone who is fighting for their life. The victim in you causes you to fight for your life even though you're no longer in that place anymore. Even though that relationship has dissolved or subsided, you still see yourself as this victim. And so every time you get with somebody, you continue to fight for your life, not even realizing that you're in a fight all by yourself. I want to take you to a story in the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 42. Genesis chapter 42. And I'm going to read just an excerpt from this story, but I'll be able to explain more of it. The truth is, you actually should go back and read starting at Genesis 40 so that you can understand the full context of what's going on here. But I'll try to surmise it for you. Today we're going to highlight Genesis chapter 42, verses 8 through 12. You'll find these words. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they didn't recognize him. And he remembered the dreams he'd had about them many years before. He said to them, you are spies. You've come to see how vulnerable our land has become. No, my Lord, they exclaimed, your servants have simply come to buy food. We are all brothers, members of the same family. We are honest men, sir. We're not spies. Yes, you are, Joseph insisted. You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. Let me give you some background on this story. Many of you know the story of Joseph uh, when he was 17 and he was favored by his father, uh, so much so that he had this coat that he would wear of many colors. It was what his father uh, gifted him because uh, Joseph was born out of his father's old age. And so he had a special place in his father's heart, and his father made him this coat of many colors. Uh, we know that Joseph, when he was 17, he shared some dreams with his brothers, and his brothers were envious, and they were jealous, and, and they conspired to kill him. The Bible says they conspired to kill him, and not only that, uh, but they literally left him in a ditch or in a dungeon or in a pit, and they left him for dead, but God had other plans. And I want to stop there just for a moment because I want you to know uh, that whatever it is that went on in your life, maybe it hurt you. Maybe they left you for dead. Maybe uh, they broke your heart. But can I tell you that was not the end of your story? God had other plans for you. And I know this is not Sunday morning. It's not a time for me to preach it. But I think that there that this is a moment in the middle of the week that we ought to stop and just say, Lord, I thank you that you had other plans for me. I thank you that you didn't give up on me, that, that you didn't let me die when I was in that low place. You had other plans for me. Think about the time where you were, you had this low self-esteem. Think about the time where you were depressed. Think about the time where you were suicidal. Think about the time where you said, you know what, I don't even care anymore. Think about the time where you threw your standards away because you had been hurt so much. You were so numb by life. You didn't care anymore and you could have died in your sin. But God had other plans. And I want somebody in here to know the fact 
that you are still alive, the fact that you are still breathing is proof positive that God has another plan for you. The fact that you are still here is proof positive that God is not finished with you. And you need to be encouraged today. I'm going to get back on track, but I need somebody in here to be encouraged knowing that God has a plan for your life. Knowing that God has a plan for you, that whatever it is that did not mean you well, God says, but I didn't let you die because I still have plans for you. I still have plans for your existence. I still have work for you to do. I still have joy that I want to release into your life. I still have peace that I want to provide for you and your family. I still have a relationship that will fulfill you and not kill you. God has a plan for you. I'm saying that to you because here's my next point. Uh, recounted victories are the perfect counter for a victim mentality. In other words, what I need you to understand is if ever you find yourself going back to that victim mentality, back to that place where you feel like everybody's against you, back to that place where you feel like everything uh, is, is, is against you and everybody's trying to attack you and nobody means you any well, when you get back to that unhealthy place, that victim mentality, a way for you to get out, your way of escape is for you to recount the victories in your life. Even though Joseph was in a situation where he was left for dead, when we get to chapter 42, we find out that Joseph is now a governor. He has the favor of the king. Joseph is in a good place. He's not wanting for anything. He's in a great place because God has something for him. And sometimes you got to tell yourself uh, the fact that I was about to die, but that I'm still alive. Uh, that's a victory. And I just want to do that exercise with you right now. I think I need you to go back and think about how far God has brought you from along your journey. Go back to the time where you thought you wouldn't make it. And then I want you to start counting the, the countless victories that you have. Uh, I put it to you this way. Maybe you lost a job. But you can say, you know what? The victory is God sustained me when I didn't have a job. I never missed a meal. I still have a roof over my head. I still have clothes on my back. That is a victory. Or, or maybe you can say, you know what? I've been through some things and, and I was left for dead. There were people that just left me out there. But, but the fact that you are alive and well and in your right mind, that is a victory. You got to start thinking about the victories. Or maybe you can say, you know what? I lost close friends. I, I lost my close circle, my close knit circle. But now you can look and say, you know what? But I got a whole new squad. So guess what? What I lost did not kill me. What I lost did not destroy me. It hurt, but it did not kill me. It was not the end all be all. And so then in that moment, you have to say, you know what? That's another victory. How about you? I wish somebody would just comment right now some of the victories that you can count uh, from the time uh, where you were once a victim. But then you look and you say, but you know what? I was victorious here. But you know what? God gave me a victory here. But you know what? God gave me another victory here. God sustained me through this. God kept me through this. God turned me around. God redeemed me. God restored me. There's somebody that can say, you know what? I got a testimony. I am victorious, even though it looked like I was about to lose it all. But I'm still victorious. Maybe you can say, you know what? The love of my life left me. But the victory is when you are alone, you can take advantage of that time and get to learn yourself, get to love yourself, get to prioritize you. That is a victory because here's the truth. Until you learn to love yourself, you can never truly love anybody else. Until you learn to prioritize yourself and take care of yourself, you can never take care of anybody else. If you were to get on an airplane, um, there is a flight attendant who gives you all of these uh, rules. Uh, just in case this plane goes down, they say, you know what? Here's your oxygen thing here. Uh, but... Before you try to help somebody else and give them oxygen, make sure you help yourself. 
And what I'm trying to tell you is, before you can love somebody else fully, you have to make sure that you love yourself. Before you can care for somebody else, you have to make sure that you have first taken care of yourself. So it's a great thing that you were left alone so that you could care for yourself, so that you could love yourself, so that you could build yourself and establish yourself. And so we find here in chapter 42, uh, Joseph is the man. He has favor with the king. He's now a powerful governor. And he sees his brothers, and now he's triggered. He goes all the way back to the original trauma. It was a trauma. Joseph trusted his brothers. He was going with them wherever they were going at the time. And Joseph then gets stuck in a dungeon, in a pit, left for dead, because they didn't want him around anymore. They got tired of seeing him. They were so jealous of him, and he went all the way back to that trauma, even though he's no longer there anymore. And it was like I wanted to jump in the Bible as I was reading this and just grab Joseph and shake him and say, snap out of it. You're not there anymore. The text says that when he sees his brothers, he goes back to that place. He starts saying uh, he gets defensive, and he says, uh, you're just trying to figure out where we're vulnerable. You're just trying to play us. You're just trying to find or, or plan an attack against us because when he sees his brothers, he can only see them and see himself in that place that he was when he was 17, but he's not 17 anymore. And I need to tell somebody today, you are not in that place anymore. You're not the same person you were uh, when that situation happened to you. You're not there anymore. So you have to learn. Here is the point. Learn to separate your past from your, pres from your present reality. I'll say that again. Learn to separate your past from your present reality. Uh, what that means is, again, if you look at this scripture, we're in chapter 42. Joseph is living a good life. He has everything that he could long for, everything that he needs. He has the ear of the king. He has all of this favor. He has all of this power. He has all of these people who are under him that he has dominion over. He's living a great life. But when he sees his brothers, he goes all the way back to that victim mentality of when he was 17 and when he was helpless. And so he's upset and he's trying to defend himself when he has no need to do that. He says, y'all trying to figure out where I'm vulnerable. You're trying to plan an attack. You're trying to get me. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been like Joseph where uh, somebody could ask you a simple question and you couldn't answer it uh, because you thought they were trying to get something else out of you? Uh, wh what you doing today? Why? Where you going today? Why? What you want? What you trying to do? What you trying to get? Have you ever felt like you were always on guard? Do you know how exhausting it is to always be on guard? To always have to fight? To always have to defend yourself? Many of you, your energy is depleted and it's simply because you don't know how to let your guard down. It's not that you don't have people around you that love you, that have great intentions for you. But you don't know. All you know is how to fight. And that's because every time you have an opportunity to love again, some reason or another, you are triggered to go back to that place where you were a victim. But you got to snap out of it. You got you to snap out of it and you have to understand that even in this uh, chapter, this is chapter 42 where he's the governor now. But he has went all the way back to chapter 40. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is this is a brand new chapter in your life. And you're going to have to learn to be vulnerable again to understand that you are not who you once were. That you don't have to go back to the hopeless and the helpless you. You're powerful now. God has built you up to a great place. God has changed your life. God has 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 put this hedge of protection around you. God has favored you. You are wise now. And so you don't have to go back 
to that mentality. How many of us will be honest enough? Uh, hopefully you guys are talking to me in the comments. But how many of you guys will be honest enough to say, you know what? When I look back over my life, there are so many times where it just took one thing to trigger me to go back to my original trauma, something that happened years ago. And it's like that pain is still, uh, it still hurts me today like it did back then. This is what's causing you to not be able to be vulnerable. It's not the person you're with right now. It's the fact that you're still thinking about what happened to you back then. How do we overcome the victim mentality so that we're able to be vulnerable again? How do we do that? It means that I want you to do this. Uh, it's just an exercise that because I want you to know that I'm not trying to get you to act like your past doesn't exist. I don't want you to act like it never hurt you. I don't want you to act like it never happened but I need you to try this exercise. I want you to say this with me. It happened, it hurt, but now it's over. Whenever you find yourself going back to that place where you are triggered, whenever you find yourself going back to that place where you wanna be able to love, but you keep fighting for your life like you did when you were in that last situation, I want you to look in the mirror if you don't have a mirror at the time, you can take your cell phone and turn it around. Look at yourself and say, it happened, it hurt, but now it's over. Today, I want you to know that you can heal. And one of the problems that we have is that because we're so busy fighting, we forget to heal. We forget to understand that you don't have to fight anymore. God wants you whole. You'll never be able to love the way that you need to love until you heal. You'll never be able to embrace new friendships, new partnerships, new friendship circles until you are healed. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself in a place where you're saying, you know what, I don't need no new friends, no new friends, no, no this, no that. But really what you're doing is stunting your growth. There's somebody who's able to love you the way that you deserve to be loved. But they can't do their job at loving you until you learn to heal from the loss of your past. Heal from the trauma so that you can be vulnerable again. I hope today's message was able to help you. I hope it was insightful. I know that there were some touchy parts in there uh, because all of us have something in our past that was traumatic, something that hurt us deeply, something that we thought maybe we would never overcome. But look at you now. Look at how far God has brought you from. I want to encourage you to turn the page. I want to encourage you to realize that you're not in that chapter anymore. You're in a brand new chapter. And in this chapter, you are healed. In this chapter, you are whole. In this chapter, you are wise. In this chapter, you are victorious. I want you to remember that. And I'm going to pray for those of us who have this, this, this problem where we continue to be triggered and go back to that victim mentality. And it's causing us to not be vulnerable. It's causing us to not be able to open up. I want to pray for you today. And I'm also going to pray for the offering. And so if you guys have not yet had a chance to support the ministry financially, I want you to take this moment right now. I want you to sow into good ground. I thank God that he continues to bless our ministry. He continues to allow us to be a blessing to the community and a blessing to the world. And uh, it's because God has used you. He's used your resources that you have given to this ministry, and then we turn around and give it right back to the community. So be encouraged today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are so awesome. You are so mighty. God, you are our safe place. You are our refuge. 
we find safety in you. And we thank you, Lord, that when we don't feel safe anywhere else, we're safe in you. Father, today I pray for so many who are streaming today that will say, I can't open up. It's too hard because of what I've been through. Nobody really understands what I had to overcome and what I had to fight through. And so it's hard for me to open up. But Father, I'm asking you right now that you would sensitize the hearts of your people again. Help them to see that there is healing after heartbreak. Help them to see that what did not destroy them only made them better. Only made them stronger because you were with there, you were there with them the entire time. Father, touch your people. Touch the broken place. Mend the broken heart. Touch the person who does not even realize that he or she is always fighting. Touch the person who does not realize that they can't open up. That they've not been able to be vulnerable. Touch them now, Father, because on the other side of vulnerability, there is satisfaction and love. There is a love that we cannot experience without being willing to be vulnerable. Father, even your word says that there is strength in weakness. That when we're at our weakest place, that's where you strengthen us. When we are vulnerable with you, God, that's where you empower us. That's where you strengthen us. And I'm asking you, Father, right now, for those that are streaming right now, God, that you would give them the strength to try again. Give them the strength to open up again. Heal the broken heart. Heal them from the trauma of their past. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said amen. I, I want to make sure that if there's anyone today uh, who has not had an opportunity uh, to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to make sure that you have that opportunity because that is what jumpstarts your healing. If you really want to be whole, you got to get to know Jesus. And so it's very simple. You don't have to come to church to be saved. You don't have to shake my hands. I don't have to lay hands on you at all. All you have to do is confess and believe. We're going to take you through a time of confession where you get an opportunity to confess your faith and also to repent and turn away from those things that are not like God. Just repeat after me. We're going to walk you through the process today. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for all of my sin. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose on the third day. And I believe you live today. Lord, I welcome you into my heart. Change me. Make me a better person. Transform me. From this day forth, I am saved. My brother and my sister, if you prayed that prayer with me today, you are saved. We congratulate you. We celebrate you. You have just walked into the greatest season of your life yet. And guess what? This is just the beginning. Well, that's the end for us today. Again, Sunday, we have something very special, uh, a presentation for all of our mothers. We just want to honor you and let you know that we're thinking about you. Stay home, stay safe, and most importantly, stay with God. I'll see you next time.